Welcome to all of you from Matthias and from Chihuahua. Okay. Chihuahua from Chattimo, yeah. <laughs> okay, today's topic is support and resistance. Um, I think it is the most interesting topic in trading in general because a lot of strategies are based on this concept of support and resistance. And it is really hard to find a strategy without using support or resistance. So let's start. And of course, I have prepared a lot of examples. And please use the chat box if you have any questions at any time. We are happy to answer your questions. OK, what is on today's agenda? Um, on today's agenda, we want to clarify what is the support, what is the resistance, what is a price flip. And then I will show you in detail seven ways to trade a support level and seven ways to trade a resistance level. Let's start. So here you can see support and resistance, some general uh, bullet points about support and resistance and support and resistance uh, at all. So support and resistance are the basis and the basic, as I already mentioned, of almost all popular strategies. So maybe you remember the beginner strategy the last two weeks. Even the beginner strategy contains support and resistance. And this is in terms of fractals we used there. The fractals are showing up on each swing high and swing low. And if you draw a horizontal line on each fractal, then you have a support or resistance level. So you see every strategy who uses uh, yeah, swing highs and swing lows to make a decision and this is a lot of uh, trading strategies, these are based on support and resistance. Only those who understand these concepts can trade successfully. This is my personal opinion, but I'm pretty sure Timo, you will agree. Of course I would do, Matthias. Yeah. Okay, yes, yeah. support and resistance is so important and it is really, really necessary to understand this concept. Uh, support and resistance are based on existing swing highs and swing lows. On the tick chart, but of course, it makes no sense to use a tick chart these days. That was maybe an opportunity 10 or 20 years ago. So in these days, it is not so useful and helpful and not recommendable to use a tick chart for trading. But on all other time frames, as I already mentioned, the minute chart, five minute chart, hourly chart, and so on, every time frame you can imagine, you can apply support and resistance trading. Um, what is a support? The support level um, is existing if you draw a line, a horizontal line on a swing high. And it is much better if you have several swing highs at a similar level and then you draw a horizontal line, then this is, or swing lows, sorry, uh, here. This should be swing lows. I don't want to confuse you, sorry for that. And this here are swing highs, of course. Um, at a similar level, then you have a support level. So you can say, in other words, a support level always slow the price when it falls. And vice versa, the resistance level is the same with swing highs, and the resistance is if the price goes up and then Comes, it becomes slower and slower. The um, how can you say that? So the increasing in price is not that strong as the recent movements. And in this case, we are talking about the resistance level. And now maybe the very very important thing is, please don't search for support and resistance levels. It is only helpful and useful when you see it on the first side. So if you see the resistance level without looking for it, then it is a support or resistance level for everybody in the market, because then it is a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, everybody pay attention to this level 
and then you have a very clear support or resistance level. Okay, then the next one, support and resistance level. Very obvious price levels, as I mentioned, um, are perceived by many market participants. There are many, many pending orders at these levels. Maybe you can imagine that a price goes up and we are facing a very strong resistance level, then a lot of people think about their positions or maybe potential positions. They want to open their long or short position. Other people are taking their profits at these levels and vice versa. The same is valid for a support level, of course. And in these pending orders, it makes absolute sense to place these orders for an entry, a stop or a take profit at these areas of support or resistance. And in general, I can say in a long trend, uh, in a long trade, resistance is a good take profit level. And for a short trade, a support level is a good take profit level. Uh, these course or price levels are also highly recommended for different entrances. So you can say if you go long at the support level, and you can also go long at a resistance level if this resistance level is broken. So we go through all the examples in a few minutes. So please be a little bit patient and it will be very soon there. A support can be used for both long and short entries and the same as valid for resistance levels. You can go long and short at these levels. Um, maybe the last more theoretical thing before we dive into the practical examples is to say that if a support level breaks, then it becomes a resistance level. It's also called a price flip. And if a resistance level breaks, then it becomes a support level. And I will show you this very soon. But first of all, let's have a look at an example for support. And you can see this green line here. This is a support level, a horizontal line. And you see these swing lows here, 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 and here. So this level was successfully tested four times. And maybe you are wondering or you ask, why is this level a specific this line and not a few pips lower or higher? And this is where the um, individually decisions comes in. So there is no, this is the perfect line. You can draw this line lower or higher. That's not a, not a big deal. Um, you can take the rigs of a candle. You can take the bodies of a candle or a mixture of both of it. And this is the support line. I would draw it. So uh, I did it. <laughs> Actually, I did it. I draw the line here for the support level. So this is a support level. Now let's have a look how a resistance level looks like. So this was the former example of support level. But now we pay attention to the red line here. The red line is a resistance level. You can see it was, was tested several times successfully and we have here five successfully tests to price at the first time. Of course, you cannot draw the horizontal line because you don't even know it that is existing. But it goes down and move up again. Then you have here the level from the first test and you can then draw the line. Price moves down again, test the level again, moves down again, test the level again, moves down again, test the level again and so on and so on. Yes, you can see here, this is a very, very strong resistance level. And yeah, any questions so far regarding the support or resistance levels? Oh, Zena is typing anything. Okay, then just wait for her. How did the bull candle close above above the resistance line? 
Okay, okay. Um, I expected to have this uh, question, to be honest. Um, you can ignore this bullish candle here for this for for, for this time. Um, it was just here euro dollar in a, an hourly chart, and I made this presentation today. And you can see here this is the twenty fifth of February, and um, I just took a screenshot to explain what a resistance line is so you can ignore this even the price breaks through it is still a resistance line but for now you can ignore the end here and this is a called false breakout but this is not part of today's uh, webinar but good question good question um but no other questions i can see okay then i would say let's draw lines together um i yeah, I have maybe, well, let's first start the trading view. Just a second. Okay. Good. You can send me an asset of your choice. On which ex practical example we want to test the support and resistance level? What would you say? What can you suggest? Euro dollar, oil, gold, whatever you want. Let's take DAX, for example. Yeah, Sina's diving. Euro oh, dollar is fine. Dollar. Okay. Euro dollar is fine. Okay. And on which time frame? Because I told you you can apply this on each time frame. So we can switch here the time frame to whatever you want. I think 15, yeah, four hours. Oh, only chart. Okay. Okay. And I have some lines here for explanation reasons. So let's remove this line first. Okay. And then I would say, let's have a look at the chart. I will zoom a little bit in. And what, what would you say? Here, maybe you can, hopefully you can see the numbers very clear. So what would you say, what is here a nice support level? What do you think, guys? What is a nice support level here? Support level always is re uh, related to swing lows. So have an eye to the swing lows at a similar level, and then you have a great support level. What would you say? What is a great support level for this price area here, for this chart area I show you right now? And don't forget, don't searching for it. It must jump into your face. <laughs> yeah, Matthew, maybe you have an idea. The two lows in the middle of the chart. So these here. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. This is a pretty clear support level here at 112.23 uh, we have a swing low the market goes up a little bit test the level again and therefore we have here a pretty clear support level okay then what is a nice resistance level here what would you say Okay, now the highest highest. <laughs> okay, absolute great. Now she's right, yeah. 50-50. <laughs> okay, we have here the level. So maybe we can use this, but then, yeah, it's, it's possible to take this one. But then it is pretty close here. So it is not a mistake to take this level here at 114.90. Uh, but you can also take this level here 
Yeah. Then you have here the first one, second one, third one, and finally here the fourth one. And yeah, this is a good resistance level. Absolutely great. I think you have understand everything pretty clear. Or do you have any kind of questions regarding my drawing here? So of course you can move these lines a little bit lower or higher. This is up to you and it makes no big difference in your trading later on. Okay, so some, yeah, Sina's typing. Do you want to make another example, then just let me know which asset you want to know and which time frame, and then of course we can do another example together. <laughs> Okay, I don't read any new, uh, there's a question. Can we see the price right now, but the lows in the middle are, um, can, could you read it completely, Timo, because? Yes, 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 of course. I uh, can't really see the price right now, but the lows in the middle, are they valid too? Correct, yeah, of course. You can take also this ones here, swing low, up, swing low, up, swing low, up. This, of course, is also valid. And you can see here later on, this level was tested again. Um, of course, you can draw this line as well. Um, for me, it was just important in this situation to make the, the very most recent one. And this is, for me, this level here. But you're right, Sina. This is also a great support level here. And you can draw some other lines here, but as I already mentioned, it is a good recommendation to take only these ones who are jumping right in your face and, and not looking and searching for these levels. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. Okay, then I jump back to my presentation here and just let me explain to you what a price flip is. In this example here, support becomes a resistance. You see here, the market moves down, up, down, up, down, all the time on a similar level. And then the price breaks through. Yeah, we have a broken resistance, a broken support level. And after a support level is broken, then it becomes very often a resistance level. And this is what happens here. So the market goes down and tests the level again from the downside, and then the market goes down. So this is also called a pullback. The market breaks a level, tests the level again, and then moves in the direction which was before. Yeah, this here is a price flip. Support becomes a resistance level through a pullback. And uh, of course, there's also existing for a price flip resistant becomes a support level. You see here, this level was tested two times. Then the market breaks through and tests the level from the upside again. And in this particular case here, it was tested two times, but only the first one is called pullback. Yeah, here in this example, a resistant becomes a support level. Okay, so then what I want to tell you here is if a support or a re resistance level is broken, then it doesn't necessarily mean that it is not more important to you. Yeah? For example, we had this uh, example with the candle in in the chart. Yeah, this level here becomes a support level again after the market moves up. Yeah, so this is not a price flip, but not only why, uh, because of a broken support level, it doesn't necessarily mean 
that this level is story or history. So it can be very useful in the future. So you can use this again. Okay, then um, I want to show you three or in total seven ways to trade a support level. So first of all, you have to see where is a support level and of course where is resistance level. But if you have figured out where a support level is, then you can use this to your favor and you can make a, yeah, three kind of long trades. And later on, I will show you four trade opportunities for short trades. Okay, first is go along with the market order. And then if you think now the price is close enough to the support level. So I mark this here with the one. So please imagine the market goes down. Then we are in this candle here and we are thinking, okay, this support level will push the market further up and then you decide to go long with the market order. So this means right now. Um, the second way is to set a limit order. So this of course is a pending order. Um, for example, the market is, is here or somewhere in this candle and you expect to see the market goes further down and you don't want to wait for it, you can just set a pending order for a particular price level. So this here is marked with a two. And if the pending order is triggered, then you are long in this underline. And the third option here is to wait for a reversal pattern. And the reversal pattern is, for example, for a support level, a morning star pattern or a bullish angle thing. So in this case here, it was a bullish angle thing. So the second candle here um, engulfed the first bearish candle. And this is so-called bullish angle thing. And you can go long after this pattern is confirmed. And this happens with the next candle. And here I mark this with a three. So these are the three opportunities to use a support level for going long. And the stop loss in all of these cases should be below the support level because this horizontal support level helps you to protect your trade. Yeah? If the market goes through, then of course it is more likely that the market goes down and then of course you don't want to have a long position. Therefore, you should place your stop loss order below the support level. Um, and maybe one another thing I want to say is that the first thing, first option to go long with the market order is the most risky one. Uh, the second one has less risk. And yeah, and the third one here, you have a confirmation with a bullish reversal pattern, then of course you have um, yeah, the less risk you can have in this particular case here. Okay, any questions regarding these three options here? Uh, from my side, not Matthias. Okay, then I can continue with the four interesting spots for going short using a support level. And of course, such a support level is not valid for all the time. It can happen that the level breaks and then of course, this is an opportunity to go short. And we have here four possible opportunities to make a trade with a support level is broken. The first one is, go short with the market order. So for example, we are here in this candle and this candle is still moving, but you think, okay, the support level is history. Now the market will go down. Then of course you can go short with the market order right now. Yeah, this is the first opportunity here. If you are more conservative, then you can go short at a specific limit 
the depending order. So for example, we are here at this candle and you expect that the support level will be broken, but it has to be a very low price. So it's not enough to have a price level like this. So you think, okay, the market only goes further sh um, down if we achieve a level of this, for example. Yeah, it's just hypothetical, of course, but at this level, you think the support level will broken and we don't see any higher prices above the support level afterwards. Then you can set a pending order at this specific price. This is the second opportunity you have. Then the third option, and this is more conservative, of course, is to wait for a closing price below the support level. And this here is highlighted with the three. So we have to break through the support level and this candle closed at this level. And this is a kind of confirmation that the market will be below the support level. And then, of course, after we have a closing price below the support level, uh, then you can go short in the next candle. So this is here. This is the third opportunity or the, th the third variation of going short with a broken support level. And then finally, and this is the most, most conservative way and the, yeah, the, the less risk you can have is waiting for a pullback has formed. And in this particular case here, you can see the market goes through, goes sideways a little bit, moves up again, testing the former support level now as a resistance level, and then the market goes down again. And after you have seen this pullback has formed, you can go short with the next candle. And I highlighted this here with the four. So at this price here, we would go short and of course our our stop loss is above the support level here yeah with the same explanation and with the same um clarification we had before here for going long yeah in long we place the stop loss below the support level and of course if you want to go short then we place our stop loss above the support level any questions about this? Okay, I see. Uh, is your third green marked area also valid uh, if it would be the only support area? I see a lot of candles testing this support line. Um, yes, um, it, it's not. So you can say one candle is enough or here in this case, it's two or three candles, or here, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this happens very rarely, to be honest, but it happens sometimes. And you can make, so this was just to highlight the area of testing the support level. You don't have to draw this ellipse here. Uh, this was just for explanation reasons. Um, but yeah, you're right, um, absolutely correct. But I would say this is one test because all these candles are pretty close to each other. And for this reason, I would say this is one test. You can also highlight this one here. Maybe I have forgotten this, sorry for that, but you are absolutely right. Okay, then let's move on to resistance. Of course, everything I tell you now is the complete opposite of the support explanation before. Um, we have here three ways to trade resistance for short trades. And these three variations are the following. So you can see here, this is our resistance line. It was tested three times and then the market goes up again. And then you can say, okay, I think this resistance level will not be broken and I go short. And I go short right now with a market order. And I highlighted this here with a one. The second thing is you can set a pending order. Let's say we are here at this time, at this price level, 
and we think hmm, maybe the market will go up a little bit, test the, uh, the resistance level once more, and then the market goes down. Uh, for this particular case, you can set your pending order with a limit order at, let's say here, yeah, or a little bit lower or a little bit higher. So this is up to you, but you can set a pending order if the market goes close to the existing resistance level again. And then your order will be triggered and you are short in this underline. And then, of course, the third a variation and this is of course again the most conservative one is to waiting for a reversal pattern and in this case here you see the market goes up then build up this candle with a very long big to the upside and then the very next period the market goes down and the closing price is also the lowest price of the candle um, this is a reversal pattern a bearish reversal pattern. And if you see this close to a resistance level, then of course you can go short with the very next period, with the very next candle here. And this is the most conservative one, with less risk. And for, of course, for all of these three variations, the stop loss has to be above the resistance line. Yeah, this is pretty clear here. Okay, then let's have a look to the four ways to trade resistance for long trades. Then, of course, this is also possible. And the four variations are the following. So the first one is you see the market break through the resistance level and you say, okay, I think the resistance level is history. It will become a support level and I go long. Right now, you can do this with a market order. So this is here at the first line. Then the second opportunity you have is more conservative, of course. You go along with a pending order and you set your price level above the resistance level. So let's say, okay, I only want to go along if the market moves a lot above the resistance line. So for example, you set the pending order at this level here. And after the pending order is triggered, you are long. And the stop loss, of course, should be below the level. The third variation is to wait for a closing price above the resistance level. And this is here highlighted with variation three. So the candle breakthrough, the closing price is above, and this is your confirmation to go long. Yeah, stop loss should be below again. And the fourth variation is to go long when a pullback has formed. And you see here the market moves up, test the level, moves down, then break through and test the level here. The former resistance level now becomes a support level. And after this pullback is confirmed, then you can go long. Yeah? The market tests the level, moves up again in the right direction, and then you can say, okay, this is enough confirmation for me. I go long right now. And this here is highlighted with the four. So these are the four variations to go long if the resistance level has broken. Okay, any questions regarding these uh, in total 14 ways to trade support and resistance? It was a very good presentation, Matthias. Thanks. No, from my side, everything was clear. I hope uh, the other will will ask their question if they have got someone. Yeah. Hopefully, there are some questions. Um, if not, or maybe you see the video, or you you have some questions later on, then of course you can take you can contact us at any time on the support at trademo.com. Okay, and when anyone is uh, wanting uh, to getting more information, just especially from your side, I would advise everyone to be a premium member. I will uh, send the link over the chat box. So I would recommend anybody there uh, to yeah click on it, to register, to upgrade as a premium member, and then uh, you will get any time the chance to get in contact with Matthias. Thanks, Matthias. 
and yeah. all the other informations and content contents what you need to become a very successful trader and automatically of course uh, more money yeah absolutely and i know i know that i think matthias the voucher code uh, is uh, still activate uh, so uh, if uh, anyone wants to try for example the premium access for the first month for one euro just only try uh, type in the uh, or voucher field this code i will write it in the chat box especially for you and you will pay for the first month i think only one us dollar yeah that's right and of course what you get for the one euro is you can test the full premium service we have and you can choose your own um nano diplomas i will show this in oh no as a typo somewhere nano diplomas maybe yeah nano diplomas um, and a nano diploma, what is a nano diploma? A nano diploma includes a lot of courses. Each course has a lot of lessons, projects, quizzes where you can test your, your knowledge. And of course, the projects are more challenging. So yeah, you have the choice between perks and investor nano diploma, and it is a lot, a lot to do. For example, I can show you just very quickly the forex become a successful forex trader in the forex nano diploma you have 52 hours of uh, courses and projects and yeah this is a very challenging thing you have a lot of courses you can download the syllabus and there you can see what courses are included so for example here the forex beginner uh, the forex nano diploma has five terms and each term has your first introduction and so on a lot of courses and a lot of interesting and challenging projects okay so i would say no questions um yeah, and thanks for then, the presentation matthias yeah you're welcome it was a pleasure thanks <laughs> <laughs> good no questions that's pity yeah, no problem. It was everything was clear. So this also on the other side a very good sign that uh, for everyone what is uh, was it understandable. Okay, then I I take the flowers. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> okay, Matthias, thanks at all. Yeah, and I can recommend to anyone uh, to really use the voucher code uh, for the premium access, and you will get any any contents what you need, and especially personal for Matthias Deneke. Okay, then I would say I wish all of you a nice evening and see you next time. Yeah, see you next time. Thank you, Matthias. Yeah. Bye. Bye.